we no doubt all know that Western superstition that if a pregnant woman has a craving like she wants spinach ice cream at midnight that if that craving is not fulfilled that there'll be dire consequences but also you know in the years in living in Asia it was found that there was a superstition abounding that whoever was the first customer in any store or shop or stall would have to have a sale fulfilled otherwise there'd be bad luck for the rest of the day. Now it's possible that these superstitions have derived from an ancient superstition in the Middle East which is that during the time that a woman is pregnant she has great power so if she has a desire that's not fulfilled she can put the evil eye on you. So it so happened that Mullah Nasruddin's very pregnant wife wanted to buy a new kaftan <coughs> so they went to the store and the shopkeeper who is a very hard bargainer bought out a range of kaftans for her to see and she chose one that uh, suited her and that she wanted but the storekeeper was a very hard bargainer so they back and forth um, bartering back and forth and back and forth but the shopkeeper's price was too high and he, he, he wouldn't compromise. So uh, the Mullah and his wife left the, so the store. But suddenly the, the shopkeeper remembered the superstition and also that they were the first customers in his shop. So he quickly ran out of the shop and chased after the Mola and his wife and said to the Mola, 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 please, please, please have your wife buy the kaftan because I don't want her to put the evil eye on me. And the Mola looked at him and said, but you're really stupid man, you know that's an old wives tale and a superstition. The shopkeeper said, yes, 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 I know, but will you please, will you please have her buy the kaftan just in case. We've been, we've been attempting to, to bring a circle around to, to join this circle so that we have an opening through which we can pass into a new phase of these s stories. But there's a story about an old farmer and the only thing that would grow in his land were potatoes. So the family made a subsistence living, eating potatoes for breakfast, potatoes for lunch, and potatoes for dinner. Well, the farmer was, you know, he, he really felt for his family because even though they had potatoes, three meals a day, there was not enough money for them to buy decent clothing or shoes for the children and so forth. So he really labored over this. But one day it so happened that he opened a very old book and in the old book it said that there was an island that was covered in diamonds and it even had a map as to how to get there. So the, the, the farmer was all fired up so he went and he borrowed a boat from a, a friend in the village and taking some p potato sacks with him in the boat he set out for the island of diamonds. Well as we can imagine it was a very very arduous journey. There were storms and tempests and, and he had almost given up hope of uh, arriving at the island when all of a sudden he saw something glitter
glittering in the distance, the sun shining on a beach, blinding him. Oh, he thought to himself, this has to be the island of diamonds. So he quickly, with his last strength, rowed his boat over to the island and stepped out and took out his gunny sacks and he was filling them with diamonds that littered the beach everywhere you looked. But as he was doing this, a group of people who lived on the island came down and said, what are you doing? And the farmer said, oh, I'm going to be a rich man. I'm gathering all these diamonds. I'm going to be rich and take care of my family. Oh, said the villagers, they're, they're, these things are everywhere. They're not worth any, anything at all. So the farmer said, well, what is it that you value? And the people said, well, well, there was a man here some time ago and he went off in the distance over there and he came back with potatoes. <laughs> oh, said the farmer, no one knows potatoes like I do. Point me in the direction. So he emptied out his gunny sacks that had been full of diamonds and he went off and came back with some gunny sacks full of potatoes. Well, they made him king of the island. They put him on their shoulders and took him off and they gave him all kinds of wealth and all kinds of uh, uh, things. Uh, um, and he stayed there for about a year, enjoying uh, all, all of this. And then he decided that it was time to go back to his uh, family. So he loaded up his sacks into the boat again and he set off for home. Well, when he got back there, his family was so delighted they thought he'd been lost at sea, so there was very great celebrating that he'd arrived back and his, and his wife and family said, well, did, did you find the island of, yes, yes, I found the island of diamonds. And the wife was about to dance and be happy because they were going to be rich. And, and, uh, and then the, the uh, farmer said, but I found something that was more valuable than diamonds. Oh, what, what, what was it? Said his wife. And so he went to the boat and he got out his sacks and emptied all the potatoes on it. <laughs> And his wife said, potatoes, but we have potatoes. We have more than enough potatoes. And suddenly the farmer realized what he'd done. Well, it so happened that the wife, very disappointed, uh, took the potatoes home and cooked them for dinner. But as it so happened, uh, after the gunny sacks had been emptied, um, their children were playing with a few stones that were stuck in the bottom, that happened to get stuck in the bottom of the gunny sacks, you know, little chips of diamonds and things. So even though they lived on potatoes for breakfast, lunch and dinner, the few chips of diamonds was able to buy them a little luxuries that they weren't able to have before, like new pairs of shoes and some clothing from time to time. So, of course, you realize that there's a question that arises from these stories, not a direct question, but it's what it has been said over these last days. What is it that arises f for us as an understanding of the deep meaning of this story? Recognizing that it's something that the mind, like a Zen koan, is going to uh, be tripped up by. What could be the rationale, the logic in such a story that our mind can grasp and bring out as some kind of understanding. So we have to dive deeper. We have to dive deeper, bypassing the mind, to ask ourselves, what's the deep meaning of this story? What is it that arises for you from this?
but would be, do you suppose, the realization that came to the farmer when it said, all of a sudden, he recognized what he'd done. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's kind of like we can seek, we can, you know, seek and have these ideals of, of what our richness or worth is. Um, but it comes back to going deeper and finding what that worth is. That's right. That's right. And relating it to this in t intention to bring a <coughs> circle around, to complete a circle for us, a circle of awareness relative to the questions that have been asked. What is it that arises when stillness and movement meet? How does this close a circle for us of awareness? I had someone come yesterday to visit and they said, over these last weeks it feels like every bit of spirituality, everything that I ever learned, everything that I ever practiced is gone. Useless unable to be brought back. It kind of relates to what's being said, isn't it? I heard a um, little story, I think it was on the radio yesterday, and they were telling a little parable about someone going to one of the masters, and I think you might have even told this story, but basically it was the master said to the man, oh, where he's pouring the tea, yes. he's pouring over and over and over, and then the, the disciple sort of goes, stop, stop, what are you doing? And he, and he says, this is like your mind. Yes. Um, and unless you have an empty cup, I can't feel it. Yeah. Yes, so yes. So like that, unless it's like we have to let go of everything, even everything we thought we were or learnt or... Because um, I've been labouring over that same thing, you know, God, I used to go, you know, I used to be able to kind of, even my intuition was kind of, even that's gone, gone. now, you know, gone, absolutely like gone. It deserts us. Everything and deserts us. When there's nothing left, I suppose there's only God, you know? So, isn't that closing the circle, really? Thank you, thank you. <laughs>